Hello, iPhotography. This is Emily Lowry. I'm a iPhotography tutor and I'm also a Luminar ambassador. And this is the software that we're going to look at today, Luminar. Lightroom and Adobe and Photoshop, etc., is all a great thing to invest in, but not everybody wants a monthly subscription. With Luminar, you just pay one time and then you get to own the software for life. So it's very handy if you want to get into photo editing, but you don't want to spend a shed load of cash. <laughs> there is a entirely dedicated, very in-depth and great for beginners Luminar course on iPhotography, hosted by yours truly. And I thought this would be a great little teaser just to show you some of the incredible features in Luminar. And if you enjoy this video, maybe you can go on to uh, watch the entire course. Cool. So this is my image shot in Yosemite National Park on my Lumix GH5. And this is what Luminar looks like when you're in the editing suite. Down here, we have all different panels full of different sliders. And in the main course, we will go through every single one in a very slow and easy to understand way. So if this teaser is a little bit fast for you, fear not, the course is very, very comprehensive. I'm just gonna show you some of my favorite features. Number one, in the creative tab, we have all kinds of intelligent AI enhancements. So we have what's called sky replacement. Now the sky in this image was all right. It didn't set the world on fire. <laughs> so if we wanted to change the sky to something a little bit more dramatic, we can use this drop down box and add in a completely different sky. What a time to be alive, everyone. If you don't like the sky you got on the day, you can just swap it out for something else. And as you see, all of the hard work is done for you. There's no masking, there's no chopping. It's just one click and you're done. And it already looks very, very dramatic and very different to the original image. And there are plenty to choose from. But if you are out and about with your camera and you see an amazing sky and take a photograph of it, you can also load in your own images. I think that's a great way to stay creative because then all of the images are your own. I think that's really cool. I quite like that one. I think that one is quite in keeping with the existing colour scheme. I quite like that. So that is sky replacement super easy and just really effective. The second feature that I love that is very, very handy is the clone and stamp tool. Now this could be, you know, part of the wilderness, you know, it's a really cool sort of photograph. The truth is the car was parked here and you can see a car in the corner and it doesn't quite add to the scope and grandeur when you can see somebody else's car in the shot. So using the erase tool, we can simply just draw around the thing that we want to get rid of and press done. And we're gonna go in again and get rid of the people as well. We don't want people in this. This is a lovely landscape photo. So we can zoom in using the buttons over here and let's get rid of the distractions. And you can be quite rough with this, as you can see. And then we press done. And they've gone. Boom. Easy as that. Now, if you look at that image without zooming in and seeing everything quite in depth, now the people have gone. It's much more dramatic without the people. Wonderful. And then finally, in the arrays, I'm going to get rid of the curb. I want it to have the illusion that this wasn't the side of the road. <laughs> This was me earning this beautiful view at the end of a very hard hike and I didn't just open the door of the car. <laughs> Ta-da! Now the road, the car and the people have gone in just a few clicks. Wonderful. Here is a simple but very effective panel. This is your light panel in your Essentials tab. When you're editing an image, most of what you do happens here. So if we want to raise the shadows in the dark area of the shot, we can just pull up the shadow slider. And if we want to introduce some contrast, we can pull the contrast. And if we want to make the image warmer or cooler, we have temperature here. 
so we could make it look like a beautiful sort of sunset time or we could have it sort of nice and cool like maybe a blue hour photograph and then of course we have our exposure which will make the image brighter or darker and then finally one more tab that i am very very fond of but there are so many more to cover in the full course is adjustable gradient now you'll notice in this tab we have the top and the bottom and i think in this image the bottom of the image is a little bit dull and a little bit dark compared to the top so if we select the bottom only the bottom half of the image will actually be affected so we can up the exposure we can make it slightly warmer so the more yellow tones come into the image and we can open up the shadows as well just to do it very dramatically to show you what it's doing if we pull the exposure up you'll see that only the bottom half of the image is being affected and the sky is exactly the same so this gives us much more control over parts of the image and i think that is so valuable so let's just have that nice and warm and if we toggle it on and off we can see what we've actually done and it does make a difference so there we go luminar is amazing if you would like to trial luminar or buy it iPhotography have their own discount code. If you just put in iPhotography at the checkout, you will get money off your purchase. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this valuable, then do check out the full course.